Hey, who on earth is this Maryland Terrapin football team? Well, I'm going to be honest. I don't really know, but hey, Ben Dixon of the Testudo Times, he knows, and he's going to let us know everything we need to know going into this Saturday's game. Woo! You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, it's the best people in the world. Yes, the listeners and viewers of Lockdown Spartans. How on earth are you all doing? And before we, hey, talk to our esteemed guest, Ben Dixon of the Testudo Times. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Mr. Dixon of the Testudo Times. Speaking of betting, hey, your Terrapins are going to be seven and a half point touchdown favorites going into Saturday's game. Now, uh, let's just start the conversation there um well first of all hey how you doing sorry don't mean to be a, a rude host but second like were you surprised to see that line or is a full touchdown favorite kind of what you're expecting for the saturday's game i have to say matt i'm definitely a little am surprised a little surprised yeah. by it uh after the line i kind of figured or after the michigan game excuse me i kind of figured the line would be around three points just given the fact that maryland's at home but, you know, I think it's as big of an overreaction you could get given, you know, a four-game sample size, week five of college football. I don't know if Maryland is really a touchdown better than this Michigan State team. Uh, from what I've seen, this Michigan State team feels a little bit better than they performed early on this season. Um, but eight, eight, seven and a half is a big line, and Michigan State would have been favored preseason, so. Oh, big time. Yeah. You know what? Hey, I like your, I like your positivity here. You know what? You're making us state fans feel a little better because I got to say, I can't say I'm feeling like all too hot about this one coming up, but uh, yeah, I mean, look, it, it, it's an interesting game because just like you said, you know, Michigan state probably would have been favored. I think they were favored actually before the season started, but here we are now our Spartans are seven uh, point underdogs here. So with that said, you guys have had a solid year so far. You start off with three wins against you know lesser opponents, but then a Michigan game on the road, you only lose to them by a touchdown. Are you feeling good that you kept it close against a top five Michigan team? Or is that a game where you're like, oh, we had them right there. We just had some mistakes. And just bring me through the Maryland fan mindset off that game. Yeah, I think it's easy to say, you know, the latter of the two options you mentioned right after the game. But given everything that's happened with Maryland football since they've joined the Big Ten recently, Michigan outscored them by more than 200 combined points in the previous six meetings between the schools. Yikes. So for Maryland to compete was a W in itself. Uh, you know, Michael Oxley is not going to say, you know, we like moral victories or things like that. But the confidence in the building is really high after that game to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the reigning Big Ten champ. And I think the fan base – it's about as happy you'll see a fan base after a loss, given the fact that Maryland has just gotten destroyed by the Michigans, the Ohio yeah. States, the Penn States, and even Michigan State since they've joined the Big Ten pretty much. And, yeah, we'll see if that continues for Michigan State this week. Obviously, Vegas says that it might not happen, but what's your feel for this game going in? Because, hey, before the season for MSU fans, it was all right, hey, we're going we're gonna to pencil in this little visit to College Park as a win. And now I'm leaning like, might be Sharpie in this one as a loss before we even get off the bus here. Uh, but, hey, what's the confidence level with a Maryland fan like you at right now? I think the confidence level for Maryland has got to be pretty high, just given the performance last week against Michigan. And sure. catching Michigan State at a bad time seems like it'll be a different, desperate, desperate excuse me, Michigan State team coming up, you know, two non-competitive losses for the most part. Uh, so I think for, for the average Maryland fan, the confidence is pretty high, just given the fact that the expectation for this game is so different than it was four weeks ago at the beginning of the season. I think Maryland fans probably, you know, not overlooking Michigan State, but feel mm -hmm. confident having a team at home, not going through the best situation themselves. But, you know, they're going to get the best, best of Michigan State, excuse me, you know, given the fact that it could be a desperate team heading to College Park. And, hey, you know, just like you said, it's College Park. It's a home game for you guys. 
What kind of an atmosphere is going to be at the game Saturday? Is, is this going to be Death Valley 2.0? Or uh, where, where is it at right now with, uh, with Maryland football and their fan base as far as hype going into this weekend? No, absolutely not. Uh, ah, okay. The matchup against SMU is a Saturday night matchup. Pretty good crowd. Uh, student section showed out. But a lot of empty seats among you know the regular fans and, and season ticket holders. So we will see. Uh, I think the vibe yeah. is higher on the fan base after the Maryland-Michigan game. But Maryland's attendance has been a problem in recent years. I don't think anyone's backing away from that. Um, and the rain could play a factor Saturday, especially. So we'll see. But definitely not expecting Death Valley 2.0, as you said. Fair enough. All right. Well, you know what? We're going to get to that rain in a little bit. And actually, you know, hey, we'll start off segment two, segment two talking about your offense. And then segment three will be about, you know, your defense. Can MSU find any holes? But really quick, like, what are the goals for Maryland this year now? I mean, it, have they changed from the preseason? Are you guys, like, you know, have a certain bowl game in mind? Like, you know, the, the Rayleigh Quest Bowl or the Citrus Bowl? Or is it just like, uh, get to six, seven wins and, you know, we'll just go from there sort of thing? What's what's the, the new goals now from a a fan mindset. It's tough to say, speaking of Maryland fan, but what has changed especially is like people thought Michigan State would be a top 15 team in the college park, and people thought Purdue would be maybe the best team in the Big Ten West, and they've yeah. been disappointing. So now Maryland's in a situation where they're going to be favored in all four games in October, and, you know, why not 7-1 and one could be, you know, Maybe a little unrealistic, just given the fact that a four-game winning streak is very hard to do in college football. But Maryland's going to be favored in all these games. Michigan State, as we see with this line, Purdue at home, at Indiana, and hosting Northwestern. So I think the expectations may have changed a little bit now that fans have seen a really competitive effort at a top-five team in Michigan and given the state of the schedule right now. Right on, and we will be getting into all the players here, especially, hey, we got to start off with the offensive side of the ball here for your Terrapins because that, that's what makes the money down in College Park right there. But uh, sadly, Ben, I just got to say goodbye to you really quick because I got to talk to people's ears off about betonline.net. That's right. It's where the game starts because they are your number one source for all your sports wagering information and needs. And I just it, just like me and Ben have been talking about already, seven and a half point spread going into College Park. If you are feeling yourself, if you are feeling the Spartans. Hey, go throw a few shekels on the Spartans at betonline.net and also find all of the latest player developments, team matchups, news and podcasts and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. As always, BetOnline remains your continued source for other sports wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. That's right. We're talking baseball. We're talking MMA. We're talking boxing. We're talking golf. We're talking esports. For crying out loud, it's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events. So what are you waiting for? Head to betonline.net, use your mobile device, learn more about the trends and action. One more time, gang, it's at BetOnline where the game starts. And as we welcome back the wonderful Ben Dixon of the Testudo Times. Hey, thanks a lot for making us your first listen every single day here as we creep closer to another kickoff that... May or may not go well for Michigan State. Who's to say? Uh, stay tuned. 3.30 on, I don't even know what channel it's on. Oh, boy. You can tell vibes are really high in this end of the microphone. But um, on a less sarcastic note, you got to be feeling good about your offense. But before going any further, there, there's a little gamesmanship going on. Mike, Mike Loxley said that uh, Tualia Tungavailoa and Rakeem Jared are game time decisions earlier this week at a press conference. That was all BS, right? These guys are going to be playing for, for you guys? Is that... I I think Talia Togavalo will definitely be playing. He was practicing mm -hmm. yesterday, had a brace on his right knee. Rakim Jarrett's a little more up in the air, hit his head okay. at Michigan, wasn't practicing yesterday, at least the portion that was open to the media. So we'll see on him. I think Talia will definitely be good to go, though. He said he feels 100%. Gotcha. And so let's start with the guy in charge right there, Tulia Tungavailoa. Hey, th did you know, a little fun fact, he's a younger brother of Tua, the, the quarterback for the Dolphins right there. Is it just a, an accurate yet lazy assumption to say that, you know, he plays just like his older brother, you know, good arm, good with his legs, maybe not a complete dual threat, but really shifty in the pocket? Or is there a little difference uh, that, you know, we don't see from the outside looking in between these two guys? Um, there's a little bit of, of a difference, you have to say. Um just looking at Talia, like you said, he can make plays uh, with his legs, and, and but he does have a great arm, uh, really just a, a special talent. He was 
think top 10 in, in passing yards last year. He's already top 25 this season in, in completion percentage, passing efficiency, passing yards. He's, you know, been the answer for Maryland, that quarterback these past three years, a school that's had a lot of instability at the position. And yeah. Maryland's hope it relies on Talia Tugavailoa this year. If the Terps are going to make it, you know, to a better bowl game and take that next step that Loxley always talks about, it starts and ends with Tugavailoa. So what is the flaw with his game, if I could just have you critique your quarterback here? Because, look, Michigan State has been getting – carved up by opposing quarterbacks here in the last two weeks and a good amount of times last season. But is there anything that defenses can do to kind of throw him off his game as far as you're concerned, or are we just SOL for another weekend coming up? <laughs> I don't know about throw him off his game, but I think a, a big flaw here would be something that he's gotten better at, but something that haunted him against Michigan decision-making. Uh, the okay. second interception he threw, Maryland was down a possession in the fourth quarter. Um, had the ball at their own 30, and he basically lobbed the prayer into double coverage that ended up getting picked off, which is disappointing because there's games where you see the best of Tugavailoa, and when he plays at his best, he really is one of the best quarterbacks in the entire nation. But something that's holding him back a little bit is making those decisions, throwing into double coverage in, in untimely situations. And, you know, if you lose the turnover battle against a team like Michigan or even Michigan State, you're probably not yeah. going to win the ball game. So his he's really a high IQ quarterback, but there's – maybe two or three plays per game where he'll make you know, a decision like that where it could come back to haunt the turf. So I'd say that's probably the biggest flaw in his game. Gotcha. Well, I, the good news for Terrapins is that uh, Michigan State does not have an interception yet this season as we are going into October. One of only the few programs in the nation that doesn't have an interception. But hey, good news for State fans. We got to be due, right? You can't go the entire season without an interception. So may, uh, maybe two is the guy to finally throw one. Um, I. I'm I'm really I'm trying my best here, Ben. It, it's I say the same hard. thing about the Jets. So. Hey, there we go. The, yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, hey, both teams wear green and white. Uh, both teams are going to be thriving here in the future. <laughs> both have great young coaches that are powering their programs. Anyway, so okay, one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. I think it's safe to say that. If not, maybe that's too extreme. Let's say okay, one of the best in the conference. We, mm -hmm. you guys, can have that debate on your own time. One of the best receivers, though, is Rakeem Jarrett. And let's say, you know, he doesn't play for some reason. You know, the injuries, obviously. What are the weapons around him that help this offense? Is there anyone that's really close to Jarrett's skill set, or is it a pretty steep drop-off after him? Well, Matt, I think Maryland put itself in a great position this offseason with its roster where they came into, you know, the year as – being ranked as one of the best receiver rooms in the country. I think 247 mm -hmm. Sports had him as number three in the nation. So with, if for Kim doesn't play, then Maryland has, you know, some safety blankets and, and some really good weapons. And, you know, Jay Sean Jones, who's one of the most consistent receivers on the team, probably has been the most consistent this season. Jacob Copeland, uh, Florida's leading uh, receiver in 2021, transferred over to Maryland. He's been kind of on and off this year, but really a, a dynamic weapon there as well. And then finally, Dante Dimas Jr. Last year, he was probably yeah. Maryland's best receiver on the team. Uh, went down with a, with a crazy knee injury against Iowa, kick returning. Was out for the year, said he'd be back. And if he didn't get injured, he'd be off in the NFL. Hasn't Has been really quiet to start this season. Maybe Michigan State is where he explodes, you know, given what you've said about their secondary and, and the opportunities they could provide for him. But I think even if Rakim is out, Maryland is, is in an opportunity where it has plenty of talented weapons where it'll be okay if, if he misses that game. Right on. And hey, let's say, you know, the, the few times you guys hand the ball off, what's that been like for you guys? I mean, the, the run game on, on the box score, you know, the numbers I was looking at, things are looking pretty good for you guys. But uh, it, does that also meet what you're actually seeing during the games? Is the run game also really beneficial for Maryland so far? Well, it's funny, Matt, because no one really expected that going into no. the season. The run game no. was a really big question mark uh, with Town Fleet Davis leading, leaving as the uh, lead back. He was with the Kansas City Chiefs preseason. And now, you know, the Terps have kind of discovered this run game that, that's really been pretty potent uh, thus far. They didn't establish much of it against Michigan, but there were times where it worked. Uh, led by Roman Hemby, uh, the redshirt freshman who's really, you know, playing for – you know, significant time for the first time in his college career and has been excellent. He's someone Loxley calls Mr. Consistent. He can run the ball. He can catch the ball. He's great in pass protection. Really the most all-around back on the Terps team. And then right behind him in that one-two puncher, puncher right there is, you know, 1A, 1B is Antoine Littleton. Mm -hmm. uh, really just a, a massive frame. I think it's six foot, 285. Changed his whole body this offseason. Uh, a major power <laughs> back. Not only great in goal line and short yardage situations, but when he gets into open field, he has, he has speed to get past the secondary as well. 
so running behind an offensive line that's returned all five starters from last year, the running game has become a lot better than people expected going into the year. And Hemby and Littleton are our two really big reasons why. And one thing like state fans like me are looking for on the defense is that, look, I, I secondary, it's tough to, you know, have faith that, hey, they'll shut it down this week. But the pass rush could maybe help Michigan State this week. But how's Maryland's offensive line? Because yeah, that's also going to be a big proponent here. Like, are you are you comfortable with the five guys that you have out there? Or is Tualia kind of running for his life in some situations during games? It's very back and forth. I will say their performance okay. against Michigan it was their best of the season by far. Maryland is a team where discipline has haunted it, not only last year, but the, the first three games this year as well. And only committing one penalty against Michigan it wasn't until the 59th minute of the game. The offensive yeah. line was really good, led by Jalen Duncan, a guy who's probably going to be drafted on day one or two of the NFL draft, um, rising up big boards, guys like Todd McShay and stuff like that. Uh, Spencer Anderson coming back for a fifth year too. The offensive line has a lot of chemistry and it's starting to show given the fact that they all played together last season and they're all back this year. Um, so Talia had some time on um, Saturday against Michigan and we'll see if that offensive line holds up, but they're really starting to come together and then they played their best game of the season against Michigan. So Talia and the running game definitely feel comfortable behind that offensive line. I know Michigan State is up there in sacks in the Big Ten, so it could be a, a really big test for that other line. Yeah, like up there in the nation or up there in the Big Ten for sacks, but unfortunately none in the last two weeks. We, we really gave it to Western Michigan. We beat the brakes off of Akron's offensive line, but like this has to be a bounce back spot for Michigan State. And uh, hey, five guys that are cohesive and returning. It's the last thing I wanted to hear from you, uh, yeah. Ben, but hey, here you are. So you know what? Hey, let me ask you a really hard question here, like an impossible question maybe. Give us some hope for Michigan State, please, like for, for defense. Like what, what's something wrong with Maryland's offense? What's the weakness that we could possibly exploit, uh, if you if you may? It's it's tough to say. I think it would start with Rakim Jarrett being out. Uh, he's a really yeah. explosive, explosive weapon down the field, over the middle of the field. Um, just, just a real dynamic player that he would be a really big loss, not one that Maryland couldn't recover from. But if he doesn't play, hey, like Michigan State, secondary can take a deep breath that's that's one dynamic playmaker out the window yeah. um the offensive line was really good last week it, it, it's tough to say because this offense really has been electric and it's been expected to be electric but i think it, you, michigan state has to force a turnover eventually like you said right right Inception. right and if you if you blitz force talia making into making roster or poor decisions maybe you could throw into double coverage get, get a turnover there uh, but there haven't been a lot of weaknesses with this maryland offense thus far and, and they put together a pretty good game outside of those you know turnovers against Michigan they were able to drive the ball down the field methodically at some points um, but th those are definitely two points there where Michigan State could have some hope on, on the defensive end uh, maybe force to lead into some of these situations and then if, if for Kim is out that's that's a big loss as well. So all I got to do is just root for a college kid to be hurt. Uh, we'll we'll see if I'm above that. We'll we'll see. Definitely we'll see how I'm feeling that kickoff. We'll see. Who, who's to say? No, uh, no. Obviously, you know, I'm not gonna be rooting for that. But uh, right, hey, right. you know what? Where Michigan State could shine maybe is, you know, despite the fact that they just scored barely seven points last week, is maybe the offense. Because hey, if I can throw betting into this one more time, the over under for this game is a whopping sixty points. So uh, in the next segment, we're gonna find out how on earth Michigan State can score against Maryland but Ben I'm so sorry I got to say goodbye to you one more time because I got I got to sell some farmland Ben you like this this is a big big time big 10 sponsor right here we're talking about Acre Pro Midwest Farm Group that's right when it comes to land sales it pays to have experts in your corner Acre Pro Midwest Farm Group are your local farmland specialist with decades of experience in Corn Belt agriculture no one knows the market better whether you're doing a 1031 exchange, expanding your operation, or selling a row crop farm, your local Acre Pro agent will walk the land with you and ensure the deal is done right and great service is just the beginning. Acre Pro provides unparalleled land data, including soil ratings, elevation, flood zones, and land valuation across parcels so that you can get the full picture up front and be confident in the entire land market. Your agent will cater to each of your individual needs and help you navigate the complexities of buying and selling land so that the process is made simple. Experience the ease of Acre Pro by working with farmland specialists like Kyle Rule, Brady Hammond, Neil Herr, and Kyle Spray. Visit AcrePro.com or call 765-587-3185 and talk to your local land expert today. Again, that's 765-587-3185, Acre Pro Midwest Farm Group. Now let's get into the nitty gritty here with 
Ben Dixon of the Testudo Times. Uh, defensive side of the ball for Maryland. Uh, hey, look, I, what did not go well for you guys last week is that Blake Corum, Michigan's running back, ran for a, a scrillion yards. Is that because – now, everyone can turn this down. I'm about to say something nice about Michigan. Is that because, like, Michigan just has, like, the best offensive line, arguably, in the country, you know, or, or the conference, if you want to split hairs on that? Or is it because Maryland's run defense is something to actually be a little worried about for you guys? Well, I want to touch on your point real quick. Before the break, you said whopping 60. It should tell you all you need to know about Maryland, that that's the lowest over-under of the year for the Terps. Wow. Um, okay. The, de- <laughs> okay. The, defense, the defense put together a pretty good game against Michigan, I should say, overall, just giving it a chance. And to be fair, they were on the field for a lot of game, given yeah. that Maryland turned the ball over three times. I mean, Michigan scored eight seconds into the game off, off a fumble recovery on a kickoff. But the defense, you talk about the run game, Blake Corum, obviously a special player, and I think Maryland's very happy that Kenneth Walker is no longer at Michigan State for that regard. Um, yeah. But the, the front seven is definitely the weakness of this defense. Um, Ruben Hippolyte, uh, Maryland's perhaps best linebacker, has been injured the past couple of weeks. He should be back for uh, the Michigan State game, listed as a starter at linebacker and was practicing yesterday. Uh, Jay Sean Barm and Caleb Wheatland, two freshmen who have been really good, but then again, freshmen entering yeah. the hard Big Ten play. And the D-line hasn't really, you know, gotten too much presser, pressure. Excuse me. Um, talented players on the D-line, but there's been situations, especially in the past game, where Brian Williams has only been sending, you know, three guys to the quarterback, and that, that'll hurt the secondary because you only, can only cover guys for so long. But yeah. the run game is definitely, I think, Michigan exposed a weakness with Blake Corum, obviously a special player, like I mentioned. But who's to say this can't continue to happen in, in Big Ten play? We will see. And then the front seven was the biggest weakness going into the season. And I think that kind of remains right now. Gotcha. And that's interesting, too, about the, the lack of pressure sending three guys. So, like, the, even the, the pass rush hasn't been really anything notable for you guys so far? Not great. I think only one sack oh. against Charlotte. And I think cool. uh, like two, two sacks last week. I don't know if it's if it's more scheme or, or not get, not getting to the quarterback. Um, they did rush a little bit more against Michigan, but there's times in, in clutch situations where they're only sending three guys to the quarterback. And Maryland secondary is good, but sometimes it, it can't hold up for that long. Or it'll, it'll break down. So we'll see if, if maybe scheme-wise that changes a little bit this week. Um, but, it, but it's been a problem so far, the front seven and getting to the QB. And so has the secondary improved from years past? Because, yeah, that's just one thing that you know we could always count on is that, hey, yeah, Maryland might score 40 points. But so will you because their secondary like kind of struggles. But has, has it taken a little bit of a step up this year at least? Well, Matt, going into the year, you felt really good about the cornerback positions. Jacorian Bennett's an all-Big Ten type guy. Same with Tarheep Still coming back. Mm-hmm. Deontay Banks coming back from injury. So the cornerbacks have, have been solid for the most part. They did get lit up against against SMU and, and Rasheed Rice, who's yeah. been, I think, the best wide receiver in the nation to this point. Uh, but And the safeties were a big question mark. Bo Breda and Dante Trader Jr., Two guys who are really starting for the first time. Uh, Nick Cross in the NFL with the Colts. He started a few years in a row. He's gone. Uh, same with Jordan Mosley. But they've really uh, played above their preseason billing so far. And they've kind of made this secondary uh, a lot better than, than people expected. Each of those two new safeties have got an interception this year. Uh, big hairs. Um, so the secondary kind of held together against Michigan for the most part. Uh, maybe, maybe one big play. But... Hey, there were times where uh, J.J. McCarthy had all day to throw the ball and, and yeah. the secondary was locking up. Um, so secondary has improved. Uh, hard to say it's bona fide, just, just given, you know, sure. what Maryland's done in the past and, and look at the SMU game. But discipline also hurt the Terps in that regard. Um, so Michigan State, I don't think any fear is being instilled in them by the Maryland secondary, but it, it's definitely not a, a bad secondary by any means. Gotcha. And, you know, hey, I, I can't record a Big Ten podcast without talking about special teams and kicking, especially in college football. The college kickers can make or break you, as many of us know all too well. Uh, so what is Maryland's kicking situation like? Do you guys feel pretty good about who's booting the ball for you guys? Or uh, is it going to be excitement every time you guys try out the field goal unit? I think Maryland and Maryland fans are thanking uh, Coach Loxley every day for bringing Chad Ryland from Eastern Michigan to Maryland. Gotcha. Um, I mean, this guy's might have been might be the best kicker in the country. I think his, oh, wow. his streak right now. I don't know if it's if it's on the front page of these game notes. Uh, it's not. Might have to go further in. But I mean, this guy's automatic. He he comes up, okay. to kick the ball on kickoffs. It's it's through the back of the end zone every time. He gets fifty yarders with ease. He was he was 
so massive against uh, Michigan uh, this past week. And, and Boxer says he's the, he was the best transfer portal that uh, they got over the uh, the off season. He's probably the best scorer on the team. He's had that preseason, yeah. so he's uh, he's been a major difference maker. When when you know hashtag college kickers can be such a uh, right. such an such an issue uh, in 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 college football today. Ryland's been like such a blessing for the Terps, and, and he's been unbelievable. Yeah, because I saw, I think it was what he started with like a fifty-three yard field goal and then chased it with a fifty-four yard field goal right after. So like that 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 wasn't fluky. That was like oh no, yeah, like, he, that's just what he does. <laughs> this, this guy this guy will be playing on Sundays one day for sure. Uh, okay. Well, hey, you know, okay, you know, no, no, here that this is going to put a smile on state fans' faces. Maybe I don't know. Uh, to to kick off last week's game against uh, Michigan, obviously the, the the play that was run was the have the ball bounce off our face mask play and give it right to Michigan. Can you guys just run that play again on on kickoff, please? Like, can you put a good call in? I'll, I'll pay for it too. I'll pay out of pocket to see this happen. Look, you're. I mean, you're talking to the wrong guy for that one. But I think. Uh, I think. I think that. Um... That was that was Ty Felton's second fumble uh, returning kicks in, in, in the past two weeks. Oh no! So, yeah, I don't. He he's had he's had a couple good returns. Um, I don't know if it was a nerves thing to start the game in the big house, which yeah, who knows? Um, sure. But he 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 was back out there returning kicks for the rest of the game. So hopefully not a problem for Maryland again on on you know its behalf. They they hope not. Um, but you know, special teams has been so good in, in the kicking regard. But the return game, giving the ball away, it, is not going to help you. It's not going to do you any favors when you're playing a good team like Michigan State. Yeah, and you know, hey, this has been awesome. First of all, uh, thank you so much for your time, your generosity. Uh, but hey, I I can't get you out of this preview without asking the most cliche question of any preview. Hey, give me your prediction for this Saturday's game: Terrapins versus Spartans. What do you got for us, Ben? Let's go cook something up. I made- for us. I made I made my prediction before. I, I not a high confidence level. Um, okay. At Maryland Maryland thirty six, Michigan State twenty eight. I think it's going to be a really competitive game. Uh, I think being at home uh, will help the Terps a little bit here. I think like like I said, Chad Ryland, he could be a difference maker, hitting a few field goals. Sure. I think Talia Talia settles down a little bit. Uh, Michigan State secondary hasn't been great, like you mentioned, uh, making making smarter decisions. Um, I don't know about necessarily tearing apart uh, the Spartans, given you know the, perhaps what weather we're going to be seeing with the hurricane Ian right. uh, aftermath in Maryland. Um, so the run game could become a factor. Luckily for the Terps, they they've established that early on with with Hemby and Littleton. But I got a close game. I think I think this line is a little bit of an overreaction, like you mentioned. I don't think my prediction. You know, just trying to get the exact score right here or anything, but. Um, I, I think the line's a little bit of an overreaction given what we've seen from Michigan State the past couple of weeks. I think this team, you know, has been decimated a little bit, uh, not yeah. playing too great. Um, but I, I just think it's still better, maybe not the preseason top 15 team that people expected, but better than a team that if they lose this game, they won't be expected to make a bowl game because you still have, you know, Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, and Wisconsin on your schedule. So. Yeah. Hey, I I did like that glimmer of positivity there, that that glimmer of light that you provided. So thank you for that. On behalf of Spartan Nation, we do appreciate that. And also, too, hey, with that prediction of 36 to 28, I can take two positives from that. A, A, our offense scored 28 points. That'd be exciting. And B, that would be the first loss in the Mel Tucker era that's come by single digits. Yeah. All all of his losses have been double digits. So, yeah. yeah. There weren't weren't many last year, though. Uh, no, hey, you know what? Like when he wins, he'll win in blowouts, so he'll win close. But when he loses, oh, oh, he only loses by a lot, which I kind of respect. You know, the, the games are over pretty quickly. It's like, oh, we can just move on with our lives. So, yeah. uh, but hey, this is going to be a game that we got to stay tuned for all four quarters for. Fine. Growth. That's okay. That's okay. So, uh, in Tuckery Trust, I still love the guy. Uh, but hey, big test coming up and uh, feel a little more prepared for it now. Thanks to you, Ben. Where can the people find you on social media to come? Uh, just drop by, scream at you, agree with you, anything would, with you. Hey, I would, I would love for people to scream at me. Thank you, Matt, <laughs> for uh, bringing me on today. I really do appreciate it. It was a great conversation. Uh, ah. You can find me on Twitter, at uh, Ben Dixon, with two underscores after. Uh, some other Ben Dixons in the world before me, so I sure. uh, wasn't, wasn't able to get that without the underscores. Uh, and then you can find all my work on uh, testudotimes.com. Uh, we do a great job. Uh, I like to think covering the team over there. Um and yeah, it's an exciting year for Maryland. Uh, Michigan State's kind of a huge game, must win on their part, I think, and and yeah. like to win this one as well. So it should be a really interesting one Saturday. I'm excited.
Yeah, no doubt. Well, hey, enjoy yourself over there, and everyone watching the game, enjoy yourself, enjoy your weekend. Let's mix in a water too, you know. Hey, let's, let's get yeah. hydrated. Let's let's be responsible about that. And sometimes I got to tell myself that as well. So, but hey, for everyone out there, go enjoy the rest of your week. We will be back tomorrow with our final thoughts show as we go into the weekend. But hey, until then, stay awesome. Have yourself a great rest of the day. Love you all. Go green.